Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I want to share my latest experience with using a Linux distribution as my daily driver and that distribution is Pop! OS, which is what I have in front of me here. I've mainly kept away from using other Ubuntu based distributions because I've used Ubuntu itself, but I gotta say I've really enjoyed my experience here on Pop! OS lately, especially with their latest release Pop! OS 20.04 the long-term support version. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to go ahead and subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So they've really added some subtle changes and have made the overall user experience much nicer, at least in my opinion. This has become even more beginner friendly than Ubuntu itself. Most things, for me at least, have really just worked out of the box here. And one of the best things is actually the NVIDIA proprietary drivers installation that I went through. Here you can see my NVIDIA settings and the drivers here for NVIDIA were automatically installed during the installation process, which is a great thing. All I had to do is select an option to install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers during the operating system install process. And after everything was done, I had to make no changes to the system in order to get my graphics card working properly. As we can see here, I have the 440 version of the driver. One other thing I'll mention is I do use dual monitors at 144 hertz, and those have been working amazingly inside of this distribution as well. I've really had no hiccups, and I do appreciate the attention to detail and allowing you to go ahead and choose that proprietary driver install during the install process for Pop! OS. I hope that more and more Linux distributions go ahead and adopt this process because it can be a pain in some distros to go through the process to get the proprietary drivers from NVIDIA working. I've also had issues in other Linux distributions where I get screen tearing even after I install the proper drivers and I have to go through these settings in here in order to go ahead and fix that. I had no such problems here in Pop! OS. You can see that I'm running the two displays here one using DisplayPort, the other one using HDMI. I have no GPU errors, and it's one of the reasons I really appreciate Pop! OS. They have a pretty simple desktop design here. They haven't tweaked much here in GNOME, their default desktop environment. It looks much like what you would find in Ubuntu 20.04. I'd even venture to say it's almost the exact same setup with your workspaces here on the right hand side. Your dock here on the left if you launch the activities bar and then in the middle you have your time and day and then all the little applications that you're running are going to be on the right hand side here if they have icons. Then your settings and your Wi-Fi connection and or wired connection is going to be here on the right hand side. But one new thing that they added in with 20.04 was this new tiling windows manager that you can simply turn on and off. It is another unique thing. Let me go ahead and drag in a few applications in order to see how that works exactly. So I'm going to go ahead, let's just launch uh, GIMP here and let me see what else we can launch. How about Inkscape and we'll do one more application. Let's just go ahead and launch a terminal window. All right, and now we can simply go up to this icon and hit the tile windows and now you get a nice little layout of all the windows that we created and they all have gaps in between them as you can see here. And depending on how much you want that gap to be, you can go ahead and adjust it down to even zero. This is a nice way to go ahead and organize your windows on one screen. And I do use it occasionally. I do like my floating windows though, but sometimes when I have a mess on my screen, I just go up here and click the tile windows. And it really does help out to make the screen uncluttered again. And so you can visually see what all windows you have open. Now, if you have too many windows open, the tile windows doesn't really work that well, at least for me. And you can see it does have some issues, uh, some crossover between applications occasionally, I've noticed. But it is pretty easy to go ahead and just exchange the various windows with each other and even pull them together if you want to. One thing that I've definitely noticed here in Pop! OS is just the quick responsiveness of the system. It seems like they've really taken some time and did a little bit of optimization, at least in the startup process. It's definitely something I can tell. As soon as BIOS is done, it takes a matter of just a couple seconds in order to go ahead and boot into my system. Whereas Ubuntu tends to take quite a bit longer. 
I mean, anywhere in between like 15 and 20 seconds for mine to boot. I haven't really bothered checking out why exactly this is, but I do know I appreciate the fact that it does boot up very quickly here on my system. So speaking about my system, I'll go ahead and show you what I got here running in the background as far as my resources go. Uh, I guess I haven't installed NeoFetch yet, so let's go ahead and grab that real quick so we can see the system details. All right, and with NeoFetch installed, we'll run it here on the left-hand side, and we can see I have Pop! OS, the 20.04 long-term support version, the x86 instruction set with the 64-bit architecture. I believe that's the only one they actually offer nowadays with Pop. And then I'm running the 5.4 kernel generic version, and I've been up for about three hours now, and there's uh, 2,098 packages on here and about 16 flat packages. It's using Bash shell version 5.0. My resolution on both my monitors is 1920 by 1080. I have the GNOME desktop environment with the Mutter window manager, and the current theme is the pop theme. One other thing I would mention is that I really enjoy their dark theme that they've made now available to users while going through the install process and finishing up. You can select whether you want to use the dark theme or the light theme. The dark theme has been really easy on my eyes as far as using it for hours on end. There's no bright colors really glaring at you. As far as the icon set, we're using pop here. And then the terminal is, of course, the GNOME terminal since it's the GNOME desktop environment. Now the CPU I'm using here to go ahead and run this computer is the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series. It's got 16 cores and it runs at 3.6 base clock frequency. The GPU here is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super, as I mentioned before. And the current memory usage is a little high up here, but I do have quite a bit of applications opened up, including OBS and then various different tabs for Mozilla Firefox, as well as some of these other applications running in the background. But overall, the memory usage when the system first starts up, I think it's around 700 megabytes. I've really had no major errors using Pop! OS so far. Nothing has crashed. Everything has really worked as soon as I've installed it or downloaded it in the Pop! Shop. And then some of the applications that I went ahead and decided to install here are OBS Studio, so of course I can record. I got Counter-Strike on here just to play around a little bit. Uh, it's been great and very responsive. I get a great frame rate out of it, as well as a new game I've been playing called Velerin. If you're interested in RPGs, make sure to go ahead and check this one out. It's a free and open source game with a great community behind it who's constantly developing this. Uh, it's in pre-alpha phase right now, but it is very playable and it's actually pretty enjoyable to play. I do highly suggest it. Other stuff that I've installed, I got Blender going here and I do have Chromium for certain web applications that I like to run that run best on Chrome. Of course, I have GIMP in order to go ahead and edit some of the 2D graphics that I like to work on. The default office Sweet here is LibreOffice, which I'm perfectly fine with. And I've installed Steam in order to go ahead and play CSGO. But there's really not much that I had to go ahead and add right off the bat. Just a couple games, OBS, GIMP, and everything else that I really use has been here. And mainly to install those applications, I've just been going directly through the Pop Shop. What I'll do is go ahead and turn off this tiling manager, and then we'll just look at Pop Shop here. They've made it really easy here to go ahead and grab your application using the Pop Shop. It gives you some options right away, some pop picks, as they say, of some of the most used and favored packages and applications available here in this Ubuntu-based distribution. One I've always uh, liked to use is the Visual Studio Code. I haven't got it yet just because I haven't really started developing on here, but uh, of course, it's super easy to go ahead and just click on something and install it. And it also looks pretty good. I think it looks a lot better than the Ubuntu application shop, but it does have quite a bit of similarity. You can edit your software repos by hitting the cog up here at the top right, and that will go ahead and show you the Flatpak repo as well as the other repos available where you can get your applications from. I have found that most of the repos that come standard with this distribution have worked just fine for me. I don't go out and get anything too crazy. 
What I haven't done yet is install Wine on this Linux distribution quite yet. I do have a video on how to do this in Ubuntu 20.04. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it should be a very similar process to how you do it here in Pop! OS. I just haven't found any Windows applications that I've missed and haven't been able to install with some kind of a free and open source version of it here in Pop! OS. You can tell that I haven't really been able to spend any time customizing on this Linux distribution, but that's mainly because I'm very happy with how they have things laid out and what I can all use here. I don't like straying away too much from the default if I don't have to, which is one of the things that I really do appreciate about this distribution. It just works out of the box, which is a great thing, especially for people who are beginners and wanna explore a new operating system like Linux. I highly suggest this to beginners, and at this point, maybe even more than Ubuntu itself. If we go ahead and run HTOP real quick, we can go ahead and check out what the processes that are currently running in the background are. We can see up here, we got the 16 cores running. Uh, they're all fluctuating in and out. I do have OBS running, so things are gonna be a little skewed here. I got about uh, 3.86 gigs out of the 32 gigs I have available for the system. Now, some of that hasn't been deallocated yet, so it's just running here but uh, the system has been up for quite a while. Normally when you first start up the system, I think it's around 700 megabytes of memory being used for the desktop environment and some of the applications running in the background. The current tasks here are 177 and we have 668 threads with only about six running or so. Now you can see all the various different applications that are currently running in the background, but overall things have been running great here. I didn't install any swap for myself. I didn't feel a need to since I have the 32 gigs. And I've found this distribution to be great with gaming. I haven't had any hiccups uh, playing games on here. And it's one of the main reasons people have suggested it to me to go ahead and try. They seem to think that it runs games very well. And I gotta say that it has been running games better for me than I have in the base Ubuntu. If you wanna check out a game that I've played on here, I've done a few live streams playing Velerin. You can check that out on some of my past live streams. I'll go ahead and put a few links in the description below if you wanna check that out to see how the system responds to gaming here in Pop! OS. One thing that I also like to do normally is to install an ID. And as we look before, I don't have currently Visual Studio Code installed, which is my preferred ID because it's just easy to use and deploy, as well as it's available across multiple platforms such as Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And the main reason being is because the terminal with this dark theme looks pretty good itself, and I have just been doing my development in there recently, just messing around. I do plan on installing Visual Studio Code, as I mentioned before, but for now, I've been getting around just using the terminal. The workspaces are pretty easy to use too. You can drag and drop applications between workspaces if you want, and then it just creates a brand new one for you. And now it's very easy to go ahead and change between those workspaces. All you have to do is click here on the right hand side and you go scrolling through them real quick. I think it would be just a little better if I had a place to go ahead and access them from maybe the toolbar up top, but overall, it's fine and that's what I would expect with the new Ubuntu based distribution that it uses GNOME. One other really neat thing that they've added and that I'm used to is if you press the super key and then forward slash, you can get a nice launcher that you can navigate through. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is that you can't just simply select the application that you wanna run by clicking on it. Instead, you have to go ahead and use your up and down arrow key in order to select it properly. And I've also had issues with accessing screens on other monitors that aren't currently on the monitor that you have the launcher up on. It makes it hard to get out of the launcher and actually select applications. But besides that, it's really neat. I think they have some room for improvement here, but the best thing about this is you can just launch any application. Let's say you were looking for something in settings, you have multiple items here available. You just type in setting and it gives you whatever options it can find up to a certain amount here. And then you can just simply select that option, press enter, and then it'll pop up for you. Well, that's really it for my experience with Pop! OS. It's been simple to use. It's met my needs very well and everything's just worked out of the box, which I'm super happy with it. 
I'll go ahead and continue using it and of course keep exploring distributions in case I find one better. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me and a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thank you for watching.